everyone welcome back to my maverick channel now on this channel we talk about digital currencies and real world use cases of digital currencies however i've swayed a bit i've talked about amd which of course i'm sure most of you know uh, these chips are in your xbox they're in your ps5 and i've also looked at open ai essentially these guys are creating some really cool stuff some groundbreaking stuff as regards computer programming you have a terminal essentially actually you have a workspace so you just type something there an ai algorithm in the background detects the natural language processing of what you've typed and then converts that into code of any kind could be c plus plus javascript uh anything html a combi or a combination of all that code and then it outputs whatever you're requesting it to do that was pretty awesome guys you actually you can actually check out that video I've, let me put a link in the description to make it easy for you now today we want to talk about tesla and their crazy new announcement what could also this mean for companies like fish.ai in the blockchain space that are developing really heavily computational technology like multi-agent systems and autonomous economic agents so let's first look at what tesla has created so tesla has a secret team called dojo and this team has been secretly working with Elon Musk watching them. Well, I don't know, what was that? So these guys created, they, they researched and created this new amazing technology. Let's try and look into it. So they created a computer and this computer will not only be used in the Tesla cars, because you all know these cars are meant to be autonomous and they're supposed to work by themselves, make their own decisions, good decisions. This computer will not only be in the Tesla cars, but it will also be in this new Tesla bot idea that was just dropped on us by Elon Musk and the Tesla community. So let me play this short segment so that you guys can see Elon Musk talk about it by himself. Uh, navigate through a world uh, built for humans and uh, eliminate dangerous, repetitive and boring tasks. Um, we're setting it such that it is um, at a mechanical level, at a physical level, uh, you can run away from it. Um, <laughs> and, and most likely overpower it. <laughs> so uh, hopefully that doesn't ever happen, but um, you never know. It's uh, around, around uh, five foot eight, um, uh, has sort of a, a screen where the head is for useful information. Um, but it's otherwise basically got the autopilot system in it, so it's uh, got cameras, got eight cameras, and um, yeah. Uh, what we want to uh, show today is that uh, Tesla is uh, much more than an electric car company, uh, that we have uh, deep AI activity uh, in uh, hard hardware on the inference level, on the training level, um, and uh, basically, we, I, we, I think we're I think arguably the leaders in real world AI as it applies to the real world. Um, and th those of you who have seen the full self driving uh, beta, I uh, can appreciate the rate at which the Tesla neural net is learning to, to drive. So, guys, that's. I don't know if it's amazing or not, but essentially well, the whole idea is create these humanoid robots that would essentially take over the jobs that humans create. But um, if you see a longer speech that Elon Musk made, of course, he knows how disruptive this kind of technology could be in the future, especially to, to the utility of human beings, their labor. I mean, what are people going to do? At least a big portion of the population. So, of course, you hear a lot of people suggesting things like universal basic income, because I think automation is something that's inevitable. It has, it started all the way back dec decades ago, and it's only only getting better in the sense that it's getting more efficient. The motivations behind creating this computer was speed and capacity. This is a massively disruptive machine learning animal of a computer. Let's see why. So they came up with a method of building a fast computer that leverages a distributed computer architecture or compute architecture. This architecture has certain advantages to usual GPUs and CPUs. For instance, it's easy to scale compute uh, or computing power. It's hard to scale bandwidth normally and it's extremely difficult to reduce the latency in computing systems. Anyone that has, that has done heavy rendering, um, anyone that plays heavy video games, you know the type of CPU and GPU and the combination of those both of the both of those things is very important. So the Dojo team leverages a neural compiler that looks to reduce the communication footprint, which in turn increases the bandwidth with a required compute. So after all the clever mumbo jumbo there that most of us do not understand and a lot more, you can check the link of 
the actual video in the description, they came up with a high performance training node that packs the following sick specs. A 64-bit super scalar CPU, a vector data path with 8x8 matrix multiplication and vector CIMD. CIMD essentially means single instruction multiple data. It supports FIP32 or floating point 32, BFP16, BFLOT16 and CFP8 which is a configurable FP8 and it's a new format. So it's also backed by a 1.25 megabyte high-speed ECC protected 5 RAM. ECC stands for error correction code and the low latency high bandwidth network switch which is a one cycle network switch. Each of these individual components that you've seen also contains a 1024 gigaflops or one teraflops of BF16 and CFP8 that we've just looked at. This means that these computers are capable of performing 1 trillion floating point operations per second. They also have 64 gigaflops or of FP32 and 512 gigabytes per second in each cardinal direction because these are matrix multiplications. In short, this thing has been built to be a king of machine learning with the capability of running 362 teraflops of machine learning compute and the high bandwidth fabric that interconnects them all. So around the compute array, they surrounded it with a high-speed, low-power Serdes with 576 lanes at 112 gigabytes. Apparently, this is more than two times the bandwidth coming out of the state-of-the-art networking switch chips that are out there today. So all this put together gives us the training optimized chip called the D1 chip. The chip is a 7 nanometer with 50 billion transistors in a 645 millimeter squared area and 100% of its area is going towards machine learning capabilities. So this is something heavily focused for machine learning. So this architecture or infrastructure has been created, has been optimized both physically and on the software side to perform machine learning tasks as efficiently as possible. And it's also very dynamic as we shall see. So here we see Ganesh holding the D1 chip that was designed internally by the Tesla team. And this chip has GPU level compute and CPU level flexibility and twice the network chip IO bandwidth. So according to Wikipedia, in computer science, IO bound refers to a condition in which the time it takes to complete a computation is determined principally by the period spent waiting for input output operations to be completed. So this is the opposite of a task being CPU bound. This circumstance arises when the rate at which data is requested is slower than the rate at which it is consumed. In other words, more time is spent requesting data than processing it. That's why it's very important that they have this thing that is twice the network chip IO bandwidth. A quick comparison of the Dojo D1 to other existing state-of-the-art chips, you can see that the Dojo D1 is the clear winner, but we're yet to see more physical experiments and tests. Now, these D1 chips can connect to each other, so each of them is very powerful, but then they can connect to each other, meaning that they packed 500,000 D1 chips seamlessly connected to each other, after which they connected the Dojo interface processors on each end of these chips. So it is connected with a PCIe Gen 4 express lane, and the interface processor also not only provides the host bridge, but also high bandwidth DRAM shared memory for the computer plane. All this was connected and optimized to come up with a training tile that gives nine petaflops of compute. A petaflop is a measure of computer's processing speed and can be expressed as a quadrillion or thousand trillion floating point operations per second. Check out the link in the description to learn more about how they integrated a custom voltage regulator module, the entire electrical and thermal pieces, and how they consequently formed their training tile multi-chip module design that looks like this. The crazy dojo people went ahead to connect those massively powerful tiles to then create what they refer to as exopod. The final compute lane consists of processing units known as DPUs or Dojo processing units that supports any algorithm. So on the software side, they developed and integrated the Dojo compiler engine that supports scalable and parallel computation as well as high-level dynamic control flow like if and else loops. All this technical jargon leads to this computer known as the Dojo computer that Tesla is referring to as the fastest AI training computer, or rather would be, with 4x performance, 1.3x performance per watt, and 5x smaller footprint, all at the same price. So, guys, I'll put the links in the description. You can check out more on the videos. If you want to get this straight from the horse's mouth from the Tesla people, I think this is extremely massive. So, I asked a question, how is this important for companies like Fetch.ai? 
I don't know. It depends on how open source the software is. It depends on whether Tesla is looking to 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 take this uh, software once it's developed and this hardware once it's developed to put it out there on the open market for anyone to purchase and use. And if it so happens that actually Tesla sells this or commercializes this, obviously a sudden increase in this this much level of computational power is going to give companies access to really testing their technology in a space that involves very high computation to check out not only the the flaws of their technology but also the how efficient they can be in a very computational space in a massively computationally demanding space as well so i think there's many many things that, that can be created with technology especially the fact that it's a new technology i think there's a lot to be developed and there's a lot to be improved upon as well as it could also be made more efficient than it is right now so it's sky's the limit from here on beyond the sky space is the limit so you all know fish.ai does these things called multi-agent systems and autonomous economic agents i talk about them in almost every video that i do and the whole point of these agents is to leverage distributed computing power um, to be able to autonomously move around a dynamic environment which is the open economic framework to be able to make decisions on behalf of their owners and on behalf of machines or to allow things like or to uh, really accelerate things like machine to machine inter uh, communication um, human to machine communication and as well as other things like uh, they have modules and the other pieces of technology that built on top of the first AI network that would really very much uh, leverage this technology in a very positive way that like the collective learning suit which uses machine learning artificial intelligence to train weights that allows interested parties to share these machine learning weights in a way that does not infringe on the privacy of the owners of the data that is being trained so this is massive so put two and two together so I think this is very positive as far as technology is concerned and, and as far as how far technology can be pushed and I can't wait to see how far this develops and how far it goes so Hope you all enjoyed and we all know that in following up such developments in this space we develop an intuition to try and connect pieces together to see where the trends are going do not if you want to see where the trends are going in the crypto space don't just look at the crypto space but also look outside of it and see how that can be interconnected with the crypto space it helps us develop some better intuition of how things are moving and where things might go and where things are going all right hope you guys enjoyed hope you learned something i'll see you on the next one bye bye guys